as a, a boy, I read some uh, about the construction, but uh, what really impressed me was that I, I did go across the Bay Bridge in, uh, I think, 1938, and uh, went to the, the fair, the uh, Golden Gate Exposition. And uh, I was very impressed because we, we drove all the way across and then back and then went to the fair. And I, I, I was super Im impressed. Well, it was newly painted at that point and all of the steel work and uh, the, the rivets and, you know, I, I, that really impressed me as a, you know, youngster. The 1930s and in the early 1950s, steel bridges were pretty well standardized. You had eye bars and, and members that formed together in, in certain triangles. Uh, a truss is just nothing but triangles put together. But a triangle is the greatest, most sturdy structure. If you put it into a rectangle, it distorts. So there's nothing magic about a triangle. It's a, it's a, the most rigid structure. And of course, if you have any sides less than that, it's not <laughs> a, 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 an enclosed figure. So that's all we had. We had trusses, and we had members that were made up in those trusses. Uh, we had eye bars, which are just bars with expanded ends with holes in them that look like eyes. Uh, we had rivets, we had uh, uh, gusset plates, and what we do is just put these together to get the span that you want. Oh, it was a marvelous bridge to work on. It was just a beauty, just pure artistic uh, not in the beautiful artistic, but in the way they put everything together um, and how they solved all their problems. And it was uh, just marvelous. Now, to give you an example that you can see today, um, and it's kind of controversial, but it illustrates it. On the western span, we had suspension spans, long spans, huge foundations because rock was 200 feet down. On the East Bay span, rock is 600 feet deep. And you can't build on, uh, you can't build on the uh, rock. So we had to support it on mud. And to do that, you had to have shorter spans. Now we have mud flats. And as we get to the island, the rock does come up to the island. So what, and there was a proposed navigation span at the, right next to the island on the east side. So I had to have a long span. Well, the long span was what we call a cantilever today. It was 1,500 feet. And it had to be high to get over the navigation. A beautiful solution. And then, of course, connected to the island with shorter truss spans with the rail and trucks on the bottom and the cars on top. And that swung into the, to the uh, tunnel. Then, as they got nearer to shore and the, and the t a bridge dropped down in elevation, it, they didn't need long spans, so they shortened it. Turn it around. As you look at the span and you start up, it's uh, short span, girder spans, gets higher. We go into deck spans, it's getting higher. And now we go through the through truss, then we hit the cantilever, the boom, and then it goes back down. Now to me, that's the most beautiful solution that any engineer could come up with. And my wife says it's the ugliest bridge in the world. Now, for me as an engineer, when I look at a bridge, I look at how it conducts forces down to the ground. That's the first thing I look. Oh, well, that's a beautiful bridge too. But yeah, but it's got logical stress flow. <laughs> uh, 
the, the year that uh, the key system uh, petitioned and abandoned service, Transbase service, that's when all this started on the Bay Bridge because you had a, approximately a quarter of the bridge vacant and uh, being unused. So that, that started the whole thing and that was about 1958 plus or minus. And then immediately after the uh, key system abandoned service, our unit was assigned the, the job of reconverting the bridge to traffic on, for, on both decks, like five lanes of traffic uh, and mixed auto and truck traffic on the upper deck, which did cause some concern, some problems. And uh, so I, I was doing some uh, oh, minor drafting uh, not minor, but a design, minor design <laughs> and drafting, and uh, like extending the expansion joints, the finger joints across where the uh, rails were on the bridge. There were some problems that were known and other problems that we discovered. And my, uh, my first uh, contract that I had responsibility for was uh, reinforcing the upper deck in the, uh, in the West Bay and uh, from the west end to the island. I came up with the idea of pre-stressing the uh, floor beams. We used uh, uh, T1 steel, which is a high strength steel cover plate, and uh, attached one end and this uh, stressing device that was designed in, in my unit uh, engaged in some of the pre-drilled holes in the plate and then uh, tension it, yep. and then while it was under tension, put the additional bolts in and locked it in place. 